Welcome to the Lavender Lemon Halloween Edition. Today I'll show you how we transform this house into the ultimate haunted mansion. You'll learn how we made the giant spider, the webs, and lighting in that order. First, we created the base for the spider. We used PVC pipe and cardboard for the frame, along with swim noodles, styrofoam, and a plastic bowl. We covered it with a couple cans of expansion foam and let it sit out to cure. For the abdomen, we took three hula hoops and connected them with zip ties, then covered the frame with protective plastic wrap. We built up the valleys with crunched up plastic grocery bags that we adhered with spray-on glue. We covered the entire abdomen with black trash bags and then fed it onto the PVC frame. It did take two of us, and then we took it out back to put the legs on to make sure everything fit properly and that it stood upright. We used varying joints of 45 and 90 degrees and found that the longest legs need to be in the back for structural support. Cover the foam head with pantyhose and adhere it with spray glue. The eyes are actually Christmas ornaments that have been cut in half and sprayed on the inside with black spray paint. Go ahead and alternate black and brown spray and there really is no right or wrong way to do it. Just avoid the eyes. Gracie Kitty just watched on and oversaw the project. We researched several species of spiders and came up with a hybrid for our design of a few different species. And most of them had six to eight eyes. So for the smaller eyes, we ended up using ping pong balls. Since the frame of the body wasn't going to be seen, we left it as is. Kitty wanted to be wherever we were, and after a long day of work spending hours inside the shop, we let her come hang out with us. We continued to cover the abdomen with pantyhose, hair, and netting, and then we also added pinchers and feelers to the head. The pinchers are cardboard that's been covered with plastic grocery bags, then pantyhose and hair. The feelers are small pieces of swim noodle that were threaded onto a wire and then spray painted and covered with hair. The more roughed up and scraggly, the better. Next, we'll work on the legs. We covered the PVC pipe legs with swim noodles and then spray painted them black. We drilled holes into the joints at the bottom where the pipe meets the frame so that each leg could be joined with zip ties and taken apart for next year. We also did that for the joint where the abdomen meets the frame so that we could take the abdomen off if we needed to for storage space. Once all the parts had been created, we took it out back again to fully assemble and put the finishing details on. This is where we spray painted more of the gaps and areas that were too clean and added additional hair or paint. It really doesn't matter what you use to fill in those gaps, just continue randomizing with what you've done so far and pay special attention to the joints of where it meets the body. At the last minute, I did decide to add an extra creepy detail of putting some babies on its back. So again, I used the same Christmas ornaments that I spray painted black. And the head is actually a baby rattle from the party supply store. Then some pipe cleaners for the lakes and then some little stick on jewels for the eyes so that as light would catch it, it would reflect back and give a little bit of an extra eeriness to it. The whole thing only weighed maybe 20 pounds, but due to the size, it did take two of us to carry it out onto the front lawn. And this is where it stayed for the holiday. We ordered a 10 pound roll of beef netting. Yep, that's right, beef netting. It's a very thin and stretchy material that you do have to order, but since it's cloth, you can reuse it. Since it's such a lightweight material, you can use Christmas light hooks to attach it to the rain gutters and then five pound 3M hooks on the windows. We also bent some wire to create a peg to fasten it to the ground. First determine how much netting you're going to need and then cut a section of it off. It comes in a long tube so you're going to need to fillet it by cutting down one side and then you simply poke your scissor into it and it automatically cuts holes. Put the Christmas light holder up first and then attach a corner of the webbing material to it. Then bring it down into the yard, attaching it to plants and even into the grass. 
Again, you'll use that wire along with a rubber mallet to secure the portion into the grass. And you'll be surprised how well it holds. Even throughout any wind or rain that we had, we didn't end up having to move anything. And it will even fit between the cracks in the cement. It looks best when you do layers, and we even threw in a couple bones here and there as if he left scraps behind, and I think it looks pretty cool. We even had a little bit of netting to wrap around a skeleton that we had in our decorations and placed it underneath the spider as if he was eating dinner. Next, we're going to talk about lighting. For an extra creepy effect, we added floating candles. It was a kit that we got online and there were 12 of them and they are battery operated but come with a remote and we just taped a fishing line to them and then used 3M hooks on the inside. We also bought some tea lights to line the walkway for trick or treaters on Halloween night. But as they then came up the walk, they were greeted with this scary bone wreath. We used a bag of bones combined with some moss and dark feathers along with some Halloween picks. Since the house is a spider theme, we also added a bunch of plastic ones throughout the wreath and even some hanging from fishing line. On that same thought, we did hang some fishing line spiders from the trees so that as trick-or-treaters went down the sidewalk to the house, they felt a little tickled not knowing what it was in the dark. To light the house, we bought a handful of LED spotlights and it does come with a remote control with 16 different colors. And so we did try a few of them out, first with green, and then we end up switching to purple. And which do you like better? I'll go back to the green. And then switch back to purple. So if you decide to do this, Make sure that you're okay with having extra traffic in front of your house because it will draw a lot of attention and your neighbors will come out and it will be very exciting. The kids will also want to come from all over town to trick or treat at your house so you better have some pretty good treats to give out. This isn't the first spider we've created and it's definitely not going to be the last. We got asked regularly where we got our spider and people were surprised when we said we made it. So there you go, now you know how we did it. Please like and subscribe for future how-to videos and have a very happy Halloween from the Lavender Lemon.